Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm talking about setting up Velostrone for a mid-range machine. So a mid-range machine is not a machine that's running an Intel HD graphics chip, you know, not an i5 with Intel HD graphics and no discrete graphics card. We're not talking about those machines. If, you, if you're configuring you know, an i5, i3, i7 with Intel HD graphics then there is another video for that. Go watch that one. Um, if you've got a high-end gaming rig then there's another video for that and by high-end gaming rig I mean GTX, NVIDIA GTX 780 or above you know what would can be considered to be a you know decent gaming machine there's another video for that so go watch that one this one's for the mid that middle ground now what I will say is that if you think your machine is only just beyond Intel HD graphics then watch the Intel HD graphics video because it's better to start low on on graphics and sim settings and build up rather than come in too high and then wonder why things aren't working too well. Um, if your machine is towards the top end you know but, but just outside of those GTX 780s then don't worry watch this video because you can always increase quality you know, the idea here is to get an idea of how the sim flies when you've got loads of frame rate and then you can increase quality and start to burn off that frame rate in favor of eye candy and high resolution and all the rest of it so you know it's a choice or it may be that you decide that actually frame rate is all important and you're just going to go for super high frame rates and super responsive and the graphics and physics all running super fast and that's also fine we have lots of customers who aim for that kind of setup okay so let's get into it so settings wise control system polling you'll only see this on windows and you should set it to fast you won't see it on mac or linux machines but this just polls the transmitter much faster so you get less latency in your control system uh, because we're running a discrete graphics card it means the cpu is now doing less so we can afford to control to do the control system polling much more quickly because we've got some overhead in our cpu now hopefully for screen settings, auto adjust quality no, minimum FPS 9999, quality level fastest and then set your screen resolution to 1280 by 720 Now this may sound like it's low but remember the idea here is to have loads of frame rate. We want to fly the sim with loads of frame rate so that we know what it feels like to fly when it's all working really nicely and, and we've got tons of frame rate to spare. So that's the That's the plan. So this may be a little bit more blurry than you're used to or whatever, but you can always turn it up later. We're getting a reference for how the sim flies at this point. Full screen, yes. V-Sync, false. Graphics rendering type, forward. Color grading, you don't need to worry about. Motion blur, off. All these set to no. Camera draw distance, set it to medium. We can set it to high later, but for the moment we're going to set it to medium just so that we can reduce our rendering workload a little bit. Dynamic skies, yes, they they don't add a lot of performance. They're not really suitable for low spec, but as soon as you jump out of low spec dynamic skies, you can have them. They look they look a bit nicer. High quality football stadium, no. Um, you can turn on the high quality football stadium later on, but for the moment, turn it off. And um, birds and butterflies, well, that's just an extravagance. We don't need that for the moment, so leave that off. In the quad settings again we've got overhead in our CPU we should have it's not having to do graphics anymore because we have a discrete card so we can have physics CPU usage on high camera field of view should be 115 to 120 I normally go 120 some people may find that a little bit more distorted than they used to so you may want to drop back to somewhere between 150 and 120 if you're an experienced pilot set your camera angle to 45 to 50 if you're a freestyler obviously you can go lower because camera angle isn't everything but if you're a racer 45 to 50 is good if you're experienced if you're not go for a lower camera angle propeller power 100% is fine min throttle 1030 quad weight 100% prop size if you're a freestyler go for 50 40 if you're a racer 50 45 camera angle conversation should be false unless you know what this is and you use this on your real quads if you do then turn it on but bear in mind it is the implementation from beta flight 301 and it's not as good as camera compensation in beta flight 3.2 quad rear spotlight we can leave that off low detail quads yes we want those 
allow midair collision false well there's no performance impact with that so you can have whatever you like for that trails enabled they don't take a lot of performance so you can turn those back on battery simulation up to you what you run here there's no performance impact from running battery simulation other than your quads going to have a battery that runs down but in terms of frame rate there's no hit and quad audio can be on quad that's all fine okay so those are our settings um, you'll notice that I didn't do an apply because I want to keep my screen resolution nice for the video so we aren't actually going to drop to 1280 by 720 um, but for you you want to hit apply to get those new settings locked in okay so let me just go back here to screen settings and I'm just going to change this back to 1920 by 1080 and hit apply just so that I lock those in for me and now we want to load a really lightweight scene an empty scene day is the lightest weight scene performance wise in the sim so we want to load that one because remember we want loads of frame rate and then you want to pick a track I would suggest pylons to begin with and then something with just like cones and gates and that sort of thing try to steer away from trees because you're trying to trees are quite performance heavy so the less of those the better whilst you get a feel for how it flies with really really high frame rate I'm going to use mini rock because my machine is really powerful so I'm going to get tons of frame rate anyway Ready to race. okay so see here I've got about I've pressed F12 to get this up and I've got 700 odd 800 odd frames per second and of course with 800 frames per second this is all going to fly really nicely you know, there's going to be very hardly any delay in the controls the physics is all going to be running lovely and this is the time to just fly it get a feel for it make sure that on your machine you've got 150 to 200 frames a second that's kind of where you want to be aiming with with a really simple scenery like this 200 frames per second it, sure maybe even more than that but the idea is that you've got loads of frame rate overhead because you want to feel how it is to fly at 200 odd frames a second once you've done that we can then start looking at well okay if I've got some overhead and you can see here I've got absolutely tons of overhead you know, 700 frames a second you could up your quality level I can do that by pressing E and you can see I've gone up to fast up to simple and even at simple in fact let's go up to good so at good I've still got 500 frames a second but bear in mind that this is a very very simple scene if I change to river 2 which is the most complex scene in the sim I may not be getting 500 frames per second anymore at good so you kinda wanna switch between scenes now and and find a nice quality level that you can run at in all scenes and still get you know, 150 200 frames per second that's what we're aiming for is a nice high frame rate you don't want to be dropping down into the sub 100s if you can help it on a mid-range machine you want to reduce quality reduce quality and reduce screen resolution and get a nice high frame rate because the sim will always fly better with frame rate the physics can run faster we can get much more accurate results from the physics equations when the frame rate is high okay so from here really it's just a case of tuning because you just want to settle on what your machine is capable of you know we've started really low we've flown it we know how it flies now we start adding in extra quality stuff and keep flying it and make sure that it still flies how you like if you notice that your frame rates come down quite a lot and it's now not quite flying how you like then you may want to sacrifice that eye candy and head back into areas where you've got more frame rate so again it's it's a preference thing as to how you tune it but you want to make sure that it flies the way you want first and foremost and then secondary to that is what quality level you run and how pretty it all looks uh, obviously if you want it to look super pretty and still have loads of frame rate then a gaming rig is the way to go and I can show you that here if I go all the way up to fantastic 
you can see here I'm still pulling over 300 frames a second so I can run on fantastic if I want to. As it turns out on this machine I tend to run on beautiful in every scenery um, and that will return me well over 200 frames a second. You probably aren't going to get that on a mid-range machine, almost certainly aren't going to get that on a mid-range machine, so you've got to find the quality settings and resolution that work for you. And there are quite a lot of things to play with, but the things to play with are the camera draw distance, low, medium and high, because that can make really quite a difference if you change the camera draw distance. The resolution of your screen, because every time you go up in resolution you actually quadruple the number of pixels you need to draw, because it's on a square law. So that's something to bear in mind, that as you go up you, you quadruple the, the number of pixels you're drawing with, with every screen you know every every pixel you go up you actually add on, on four pixels if that makes sense um, so resolution is important for controlling frame rate camera draw distance is important for controlling frame rate and quality level which is controlled with the D and the E keys you know when you're down at fastest the textures are actually drawn at half their size and that means that you can they're drawn much more quickly and you get much much faster frame rates as a result of doing that so these are the things those are the kind of the three things that you can use for tuning uh, in order to get your frame rate the way you want it you shouldn't on a mid-range machine have to touch physics CPU usage you shouldn't have to run normal control system polling you can try it if you wish if you want to just you know, the, the only one that I would potentially change is control system polling and change back to normal if you really are struggling for frame rate and just see if that gives you anything extra but that's the only one okay uh, that's pretty much it it's the methodology is start low and and build up but the reason you start low is so you can get a feel for how it should be flying and then you build up until you reach a point where you say okay that's enough I'm happy at this frame rate that's how I like it to fly and I don't really want to drop below that particular frame rate okay that's it for this video and I'll see you on the next one